Hey guys, well it's a uh, weekend again. I didn't get a whole lot done this week. Had some other stuff going, but uh, plan is for the weekend on Sunday, which is tomorrow. I'm gonna try to uh, we're gonna try to get the new frame rails welded on the uh, the rear section of the frame. We're gonna try to get everything put together. So see if we get that far this weekend. I'm hoping. A buddy of mine's supposed to come over and. Do the welding on uh, Sunday, so we'll see how far I get. Here, I'll turn the camera around. I'll see what I'm gonna have to get started. Yeah, well, as you can see, all the bolts are drilled in the frame. I haven't got the haven't got the cuts done on the back of the frame yet. But this morning, I'm gonna go in. I've got what the plan is is I'm going to uh, I'm gonna be making a cut somewhere around here. That'll give it its 280 inch wheelbase. So this morning, I gotta get this cross member out and basically pull all this wiring and hoses back, get them pulled back there out of the way, and pull the drive shaft out and carry it there. And that's, that's what I'm gonna try to get done this morning. So I got a clean work area up here to, uh, to get the cutting and, and everything on the frame, so. But that's where we're at right now, and hopefully I get as far as I want to this weekend. All right, guys. Want to just show you what we got done right here, what I've got done right here. What I did, What I'm gonna do is Z cut the frame here, but I'm gonna leave, oh, it's approximately an inch and a half flat right here on the end. Uh, I, I don't think they call it the Z, um, I can't remember exactly. Um, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of different ways people, uh, people have an argument about what is better to cut the frame, but what I, this is the way I'm gonna do it. I know everybody's got their own opinion on how it should be done, but this way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the opposite Z cut. This side's going to be cut this way, and the other side will be Z cut. We'll have a 45 degree angle on it that way. So I, I just figure it, it'll be stronger that way. Um, I'm sure somebody will disagree with me, so, but that's the way I'm going to do it. So the way I did it was I basically measured the half halfway mark on the frame and I, I put this flat piece of angle iron on here so I can use so I can get it truly 45 degrees here and um, what I did was I marked it that way marked it down to 45 degrees centered it up on the halfway mark and um, way I come up with this is um, I went out and measured the sleeper and I uh, got the forward mounts measured back where I lined the sleeper up uh, uh, lined the sleeper up with this cross member which which um, the rear mount on the sleeper centers up on the cross member here approximately centers up but I measured it as 61 and a half center off the front mounts so I went ahead and measured that, uh, measured that up and that's how I come up with my center point on my cut um, and Previously, I had not measured it that way, and when I measured 280 inch wheelbase, it come out within a quarter of an inch of being the exact same uh, measurement. So I went ahead and just measured up so the sleeper, even though I go air, if I go air right on the, on the cab and sleeper, I'm not sure whether I'm gonna do that yet or not, but um, if I don't, I can go ahead and use the holes in this cross member and everything will line up with just the way it was put together factory, so. Um, like I've said, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do that or not, but, but this is where I'm at and um, I got to go over and mark the other side, which is the opposite. And I already have the frame mounted and um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to torch it. I've seen guys torch it. I don't know if I agree with that, but I'm going to go ahead and use a cutoff wheel to cut the angles here. And um, I think you can be a little bit more controlled and don't put as much heat to the frame. That's just my opinion, but that's the way I'm gonna do it. So um, I am going to uh, go across to the other side and I'll, I'll uh, 
when I start cutting, I'll go ahead and film it when I'm finished, but you guys don't want to see me doing the exact same thing in the video on the other side. So I will get back on it here in just a little bit and um, show you what I get done. Guys, there's one side cut out. Still got to take the grinder to it and clean it up, but there's one side. And then I've already got the two new frame rails already done. So, it's, and I alternated the, the cuts on them. So, I'm going to have out the other one and then I'm going to try to get this frame put together with the front put back on tonight and then tomorrow I'll be about ready to weld it up. Well guys, I'm about ready to call it a night tonight. I just take a quick look at, got everything done. I wanted to get done today pretty much. Um, there's the, there's the weld on back of the frame. Got both of the uh, angle cuts to put in it. Got both angle cuts put in the front frame rails. All I gotta do tomorrow morning is um, Put the cross member back in and bolt the front back on it and use the forklift and just start setting things up. Um, then I got to taper or taper the uh, welds. We were going to do that tomorrow when my friend gets here. He's going to help me. So, um, but moving along real well. It'll be good. Get that done this weekend and. Um, Move on to maybe getting a front axle put on. I'm thinking about buying a new front axle, or not new, but a, a later model front axle for it and not use the 359 one. Um, I've already switched. The, the back will already have uh, um, hub pilot wheels on it. I want to get the front with hub pilots also. So that'll be it for the evening. Hey, guys. Well, it's... Uh... Sunday morning and um, we're going to get out getting this frame welded together this afternoon so I'm kind of getting things to go in here and pretty much on track for the weekend. Um, hoping to uh, have it completely welded by weekend and all but um, we'll see how it goes. I'll turn the camera around here and um, show you where, where we're at and what we got going. Alright, got the Front part of the frame, the motor mount, like I've shown in some of the previous videos, I left it all one piece because the bolts were frozen in the aluminum there, so there was no reason to pull them out. So you just handle that as all one piece. So, but then that, at least I know it's all true to the truck now. So got that, got that cross member that I had sandblasted in a previous video in, got it all bolted in. And um, we got the miter cuts in the back of the frame opposite ways here. And we have the miter cuts in the, uh, in the new rear frame section. So next thing is gonna get that pulled off the saw horses over there with the forklift and um, 
get that set down here on blocks and get it all adjusted and true and then we got to uh got to taper the the two ends of the frames and then we'll be about ready to start welding TIG weld and the root pass. We're gonna stick weld it with 7018 on the last on the but the root pass is gonna be TIG welded. Here we are stick weld and the uh, final passes on the weld. Here we are making the last passes on the other side of the frame. Hey guys, just gonna do a little recap on what I got done this weekend. Um, yesterday was a pretty long day. We, we actually got the um, uh, frame rails all welded onto the frame and everything. I still have to drill some holes for the for one more cross member in there and and um, just pretty much finish up what I'm doing and, and get the uh, the uh, double frame reinforcement put in there or whatever you call it. But um, I'm gonna turn the video around here and just kind of show you what I got done and show you where we're at and go from there. All right, as you can see, uh, new frame rails are actually sitting on jack stands up here in the front. And um, I'm gonna show you what we got here. Like I said, we did the 45 degree miter cut on it or Z cut or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's People won't agree on this, but on what the best is, and I don't even want to get into that on what the best is. But this is the way I did it. And um, just gonna show you how we, we got her welded. It's uh, the miter cuts opposite on both sides. I think that'll kind of take the stresses in different places. So, but if something happens, we'll just redo it and go from there. But um, I think it's gonna work out good. There actually, there will be a cross member right there also, and it will be double framed right there. And I'm gonna double frame it as per the specs of the manufacturer, I the manufacturer specs for uh, for repairing frames or, or, or actually stretching frames. I think, I can't remember the, the uh, what they call it, but I have the specs for it. And, and we're gonna, I'm gonna do it that way, so. All right, as you see, I uh, went ahead and pulled the uh, frame horns back off and uh, painted or prime painted the inside, and so I don't have to take them back off after we get everything lined back up here. I just basically gonna, gonna go over it with epoxy when I'm finished, but paint the whole frame with epoxy and then paint it black. But, I just wanted to get some primer on what I blasted and um, everything, but yeah, I'm going to come back here today, put that inner double frame in, 
I'm going to cut it just like the specs say in the uh, factory frame repair book and go ahead and do that. Then I'm going to go then put all, lay all the hoses back in where they need to be and then put the cross members back in and basically get all the right widths on the frame all the way up and um, get everything measured out right. And then eventually I'm going to come in and I'm going to roll it back outside and blast the whole outside of the frame here and looks like I'll have to do a little repair to the fifth wheel mount there and stuff. And then I got to come back here. Somebody had doctored up the back of this frame back here. I want to go ahead and put the taper back on it and straighten it back up the way it should be. And um, so, guess I'm gonna just get at it. All right, guys. We're gonna. I'm going to uh, try to get this uh, front horn back on here. I'm not gonna. I'm going to put it back on, put the regular bolts in it, but I'm just going to put regular nuts on there. I don't want to, the lock nuts, I, I consider them a one-use deal, so I'm not going to put the lock nuts on yet. So I'm just going to get it on there and then, because I'm going to, I don't know if it's the right way or the proper way, but I, I feel better if I, if I take, because these cross members all have adjustment to them, they have a lot of play and adjustment slots, so I'm gonna measure every one of these front to back and get the same uh, same distance in the frame rails all the way back to true things up. As, as long as this frame is, there's a lot of, lot of give in it. Not that it's really gonna make any difference when you start pulling in and out of uh, corn fields and bean fields and stuff, or even on regular, just pulling into a truck stop. So, but this is, this is the way I'm gonna do it. So, we're gonna get at it.
Okay, that went in there good. Kind of scary at first, but let's uh, get one of these bolts shoved in. He's got, this has got about three different size bolts for it. I'm just, just putting regular nuts on these right now, like I said, just to make sure everything's right. And then I'll uh, put the regular ones in there and then torque them down whenever I, uh, whenever I get everything lined up on here. Kind of making sure I get all the right links in so I don't have to pull the bolts out again. I'm not sure if this takes the shorter ones or not. Let's see what we got here. No, I believe that's going to keep on the... These aren't adjustable up here like the inner frame. Um, these are pretty much dead on. This is what they are is what you got. So there is no adjustment to these front horns because they're, they're drilled true. Like I said, I'm just 
mainly getting things lined up right now and then going to put those inner frame pieces in where we, we did the Z or the 45 degree miter cuts in the back. I'm still debating on whether to paint the frame the color of the truck or just go with black. I'm, I'm leaning leaning closer to just going black. I kind of want to make the truck look nice, but I want to keep it original, but uh, I just can't see using, it's, it, I don't know, it's going to be kind of like a semi-show truck and a and usable truck too, I mean, I know a lot of guys do show trucks and run them over the road, but I don't know, I, I, I just can't see how you keep things perfect. But that might be from being around the car show and bike show stuff I've been in the past. I mean, maybe they don't, are not as critical as that, uh, on a show truck, on a show semi trucks. But I know on, I was, I was in the bike sh or motorcycle shows at one time and perfect is perfect on those. Um, you don't have a spot of dust or nothing that's or any imperfection or anything but there's no way you could keep that on a semi truck that's actually actually running over the road and working so i have no experience with that type of showing but i may may have to see how that goes I have to kind of snug these up a little bit. There's a little bit of gap here in the frame. I mean, it's a long ways from back there to being perfect. So I'm gonna snug these two bottom ones up and then get these bolts coming up from the bottom. I've even considered using that POR 15 on this frame. I'm gonna do some more research on it. These ear holes all come out very precise, dead on almost on the spacing and everything on these, which is what I wanted. guys this will be the end of this video um thanks for watching and um
Things been going real well. I know it's been a little while since I've put a uh, video out, so um, been pretty busy in the shop and work and my regular job and stuff. So um, thanks for uh, sharing and liking and all that and subscribing. Hopefully we can get it get growing again and all that. So thanks a lot.